We've been waiting for it to open and now Spokane's new Envision Center is officially helping people beat homelessness. Tonight we're taking you inside for a first look. And the anticipation for 40 degree weather is going to have to wait one more day, but after that it's on to spring. Plus, we are following breaking news. A mass shooting is unfolding in New Zealand after a report of two shootings at two separate mosques. We are following the details developing at this moment. So let's get started right now. It is clear that this is one of New Zealand's darkest days. Breaking news tonight, dozens of potential victims and at least four suspects in custody after a series of shootings at two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. It's a situation we have been following for the last several hours, so here's what we know right now. It happened at the busiest time of the day and week. Up to 500 people were in that first mosque for Friday afternoon prayers. Witnesses say a man walked in wearing all black with a helmet and a camera strapped to his head and just started shooting. It was later learned he was live streaming his attack on Facebook. That video has since been taken down. Then just a short time after that first shooting, gunfire broke out at another nearby mosque. One man living in that area says he saw the gunman run out of the building, drop what appeared to be a semi-automatic weapon, and then flee. Now police, we have told or have been learning, have also diffused a number of explosive devices found in vehicles used by the suspects. Some witnesses reported hearing hundreds of gunshots. The blood is uh, spitting on me, I mean, splashing on me, and I'm thinking, oh my God, oh my God, it's going to happen to me now. But fortunately, I'm alive. Again, it's still unclear exactly how many casualties there are. Police have not yet said. Police, though, are saying three men and one woman have been taken into custody. They are still not sure if there may be others. All schools have been placed on lockdown in Christchurch, and other mosques there have been advised to lock their doors. One man who has claimed responsibility for the shootings left a 74-page anti-immigrant manifesto online calling it a terrorist attack, also ranting about immigrant immigration there in New Zealand. So obviously still a lot of questions at this hour, so we'll keep tracking this developing situation for you and we'll bring you updates both here and on creme.com. As we turn to other news here at home, today Governor Jay Inslee signed a bump stock buyback bill into law. The state will now pay bump stock owners $150 when they turn in that soon to be illegal device. There are several dates and locations where you can turn in a bump stock right here in Spokane. The first is Sunday and Monday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Washington State's patrol building on West Rowan Road. We also have more information on the limits and turn in dates and locations. Just go to creme.com. In a new development, newly released body cam video shows the moments leading up to a Spokane police shooting of 34 year old Ronald Aker 15 times because police believed he had a weapon. It was March of last year. Law enforcement went to serve what they called a simple ev eviction notice to Aker. We've edited this video to eliminate too much violence, but we do want to warn you. Some of you may find it a bit difficult to watch. So just before what you're seeing, Aker had been sitting on a couch in the back of that apartment with another couch propped up in front of him as a barricade. He continuously was refusing to obey officers' orders. They then hurried to take cover after they saw him reach for something under a blanket. They say they could see the scope of a rifle. That's when the officers started shooting. The suspect was shot at 15 times, suffered six injuries. Based on the circumstances, prosecutors off ruled that both officers were justified in using deadly force. The suspect is now facing criminal charges of his own. And we are getting our first look tonight inside the city's new resource center. This is a building where numerous nonprofits can offer up services in one central location. Everything from housing to legal to health care. And it's all part of the city's long term plan to combat and prevent homelessness. Our Casey Decker took a tour of that facility today as they prepare for a grand opening. 
The Envision Center is currently in the soft opening stage. That means the service providers like Catholic Charities and the ARC have moved into the center. I'm told they are helping people already, but they're not taking walk-ins yet. Right now, it's by appointment only. There's been just shy of 40 appointments a week. Alex Reynolds with Spokane's Integrated Social Services says while the Envision Center is a big part of the fight against homelessness, that's not all it's for. We want to help um, people who are on the verge of homelessness, people who are homeless, and people who are getting by but they feel like they're just not living up to their potential and they're underserved here in Spokane. The services are grouped into seven categories. There's housing. It is going to be a large piece. Um, it's one of our main service areas that we're focusing on. Legal help for those trying to re-enter society after being in jail, as well as help with work or housing rights. If you're a tenant and you have an uh, issue with your landlord and you're not really sure how to resolve that dispute, we have legal help here. There's help with access to health care, classes on handling finances, and preparation for the job search. The Envision Center is on the second floor of the WorkSource building just east of downtown. WorkSource is a city program aimed at helping people get jobs, but some people have more immediate needs before that search can begin. Yeah, and really we would call it pre-employment, and this is to help prepare people to be able to go downstairs and really access the services down there to their maximum effect. And though having all the services in one place is a big help, the Envision Center aims to take that centralization a step further by making sure the providers are actively collaborating with each other. So if somebody's working with Catholic Charities um, and they identify that um, somebody has some health care needs, then they could walk them over to the CHAS staff member rather than sending them across town for those services. And maybe they won't make it the same day. So this is to make that same day face-to-face -face connection. Reynolds says so far during opening, they've gotten mostly good feedback from the providers about that collaborative process. Over the next few weeks, they'll work to streamline the intake process before walk-ins are accepted starting April 15th. In Spokane, Casey Decker, Krem2 News. Well, at long last, it is finally warming up here around the northwest, and as a result, Stevens Pass was closed for a while today, while avalanche control crews worked to clear fallen snow from the road. Then in Chelan, another road closed because of what WashDOT referred to as a snow slide. And there is some concern about flooding around the area because of melting snow. So for more on that, we turn to Thomas Patrick as we try to find out just how fast some of this snow is actually going to melt. Hi, Thomas. Hey there, Whitney. The snow melt has been pretty slow so far. We had 16 inches on the ground yesterday. Right now it's down to 14. So two inches in a day and a half isn't too bad. If you'd like to learn more on how fast that snow is going to melt, I have a report. You can find that at creme.com. As for the highs today, oh, just one degree shy of the 40 degree mark. The anticipation is going to have to wait one more day. We haven't hit 40 degrees since Groundhog Day. February 2nd. We should easily get there tomorrow, no doubt about that. So the only weather issue, still a chance for some freezing fog in the morning hours tomorrow. It was really limited this morning, so I don't think it's going to be all that widespread. But nonetheless, just be cautious on a few bridges. Otherwise, just a partly cloudy day. And as we get into the weekend, not just 40s, we'll be flirting with 50 degrees on St. Patrick's Day. Looks like a great holiday weekend for us, but I think our temperatures might start to get a little greedy this upcoming week. I'll let you know how, how much more those temperatures will climb by the first day of spring. That's coming up in a few minutes. All right, Thomas, thank you. Well, if you hadn't had a chance to hit the ice at the Numerica Skate Ribbon at Riverfront Park, you need to get on it because it's set to close for the winter season on Sunday. The Skate Ribbon has been open now for two seasons, so we wanted to take a look and compare how this season actually went. So in its first year, the Skate Ribbon had more than 53,000 visitors. As of March this year, it's nearly 47,000 visitors. And because of all the snow and colder temperatures we had in the later part of this winter, the Skate Ribbon was actually able to stay open two weeks longer than it did in that first year. So while the ice will start to melt away, we can expect the skate ribbon to reopen for spring skating in about a month. Something to look forward to. 
Well, who would steal from a church? That is the question people in Sandpoint are asking after someone broke into their place of worship and stole thousands of dollars worth of stuff. That included crosses, computers, even donations meant for the homeless. And it wasn't discovered until people started showing up for Sunday services. With no security cameras in place, it's just not clear who's to blame. For now, they're just hopeful the rest of us will keep an eye out, especially in the Sandpoint area, for those holy items that were stolen. Less than one week after daylight saving time, lawmakers in Olympia have passed bills in both the House and the Senate to avoid that twice yearly clock change. The House and Senate bills have bipartisan support. The one in the House, sponsored by Spokane's Representative Marcus Riccelli, says if the federal government allows it, Washington would make daylight saving time permanent. The Senate bill has been sponsored by Senator Jim Honeyford in the Yakima area. The bill also wanting to change the time on clocks, saying because of the negative impacts on public health. Now that both bills passed the House and the Senate, they'll go on to the opposing chambers for review. And while those bills do continue to move through the state legislature, dozens of others died without ever making it to a vote. That's because the cutoff to move on was last night. So here are just a few of the bills that died without debate. A Senate bill to make a fourth DUI in 15 years a felony. That one is dead. So is another bill to ban marijuana ads on billboards. And lawmakers also did not take up a vote on the bill to prohibit so-called dwarf tossing or other exploitation of little people. Today, the U.S. Senate voted to block President Donald Trump's national emergency for border wall funding. The measure already passed in the House, and 12 Republicans joined Democrats voting in favor of that resolution. Some Republicans said the support for the resolution, though, isn't about the border wall, but rather about the Constitution and the separation of powers. The president, though, says he already plans to veto that measure. The Connecticut Supreme Court ruled today a gun manufacturer whose guns were used in the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting can be sued for marketing practices. So when we come right back, we're sharing those details on how this is able to move forward in court. Don't go anywhere.